Hi, I'm Warren Brand. Hello again. My Garden Railway is based on 45mm track and rolling stock of mostly LGB, G-Scale and Playmobil. YouTube has recently been a great source of inspiration. I'm so impressed with the designs and details expressed by the videos posted by their creators. But 40 years ago, when, for me, an interest in model railways became a reality, YouTube wasn't there to influence and guide as it is now. So what are my interests and design goals for my garden railway? You might be rather surprised that they are absolutely not what most people's are, I think. Stick with me for the next few minutes and give me a chance to explain. A lot of kids would like a train set to play with, but the first one at my home was a Christmas present for my dad, back in about 1981. <laughs> That's another story, but my practical interest in model railways grew from then, almost 40 years ago. My dad's standard 00 set grew to be a massive layout in the loft. I helped with the switching, power supplies, and my dad became an expert in running multiple trains. Moving on 20 years, and he had retired, moved to a smaller house, and I had a family. Trips to my parents always included an hour or two running trains in his railway shed. It was during one of these visits that the not having my own railway became too much, and I wanted my own. But I didn't want a standard train set in the loft or shed. I started a railway in the garden, as I had no shed space or loft big enough. Back then it was an O-gauge railway. However, and this is the key part of this episode, I didn't want a railway which had drivers of trains. I wanted to operate the railway as a signalman. Around this time I was volunteering as a guard on a heritage steam railway and although the footplate rides at the end of the shift were an absolute thrill, I was so impressed with the way the old signals and control systems kept everything on the line running safely. This concept linked with my broad interest in electronics and programming and together this influenced the next 20 years of design of my railway. So what? What do I mean, control it like a signalman? Please let me take you back 20 years again to explain. My dad began using digital control for his complex layout and became very skilled at running multiple trains on the lines. Hornby 01 and then the ZTC systems were excellent at the time. But that was it. My son and I could watch and take part a little, but didn't have the skill that he had developed. I wanted my garden railway to be operated by multiple people at the same time, like having multiple signalmen in separate signal boxes. I set myself a challenge which didn't appear at least 20 years ago to have an easy solution. I had used basic train control power supply systems with my dad for years. One train on a line, voltage control knob, forward and backwards control, all good, just like a train driver. But no, that's not what I wanted. My dad successfully used digital control systems, 01 and then the ZTC system. Each loco needed a decoder and that's all good, having multiple trains on the line too. But no. I didn't want to run my railway like that. I wanted to have multiple signal boxes, all controlling their own area of track. So I wanted a control system which could grow with my railway that I was building. I considered the commercial options and rejected them all. And anyway, I can build my own system. Don't rant in the comments, what about computerised control? Yes, totally agree. But 10 years ago, I couldn't convince myself that this approach would cater for my signal box idea. And anyway, I like electronics and had another idea. I wanted to use block sections on my railway that several people could take part in controlling with ease. So with that criteria fixed in my mind, I spent the next 10 years in laying out the track and using voltage control in the meantime, and also developing a control system. Avoiding specific reference to the actual electronics just now, my railway operates like this. Consider a running line. 
I've set out my railway with track sections of at least six metres, which can accommodate one train. Each track section will have a signal at the end, either LED 2 or 3 colour, or a semaphore. Each train can be up to 2 metres, long enough for my garden railway. Sections interlock and communicate with each other automatically. A train would run from section to section, with at least one section gap in between. As you would expect, a train would run into a section, and then on to the next clear section and trigger a red signal as it passes it. Through and on section by section. Signals will return to green behind each cleared section. There are two main modes of operation, fully automatic for basic train movements and semi-automatic when bespoke operations are wanted. I have included a stop, pause, go feature where in a station a train will come to a stop, wait a while and then proceed as a stopper service would. So there we are, that's my approach to controlling my garden railway, no knob or slide train controller involved. In later videos I'll try and explain how I've developed the electronics behind the system, the installation, the control panels and other practical matters glossed over so far. If you have any questions, please add them to the comments below. I imagine I'll post another episode in a few weeks' time. Consider subscribing in the meantime. Thanks for watching and bye for now.